Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a solar powered wicking bucket. It's super simple to build and you would think this would be expensive, but surprisingly it's not. And the more buckets you add to it, the cheaper it gets. So keep watching and I'll show you exactly how to make one of these. It's super simple and you'll be surprised that nobody's thought of it yet. Hey guys, today we are talking about self-watering buckets and this is a new idea. I haven't seen it anywhere else before. As far as I can tell, no one's done this, but it is a super simple idea. You can take the solar panel and the pump that comes with it and put it all together in probably 30 minutes and it will work literally for months. And it's just a great way to water your plants when you're gone away for a week or two weeks or even a month. This thing will continue to work every day as long as there's daylight. Now this bottom bucket or the first bucket we're going to work on is going to be your reservoir bucket. And you can get these really cheap at Firehouse Subs for three bucks. You can get the bucket and the lid. And so I think at the big box stores, you're going to pay double that or maybe even more. And I think the lids are sold separately, so it's a little bit more expensive. But anyways, if you can't get access to these, you can also go to bakeries or food service companies. And they often will have these buckets. that They had flour or possibly frosting or some type of food ingredient that was shipped to them in these large five gallon buckets. And they might be just throwing them away so you can obtain these for free or you can talk to the manager and he might charge you a dollar a bucket. So that's a great way to get buckets at a super low cost, but we'll get started on assembling this bucket and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Now in our reservoir bucket, we want to put the hole going into the bucket for the solar panel that we're gonna to attach to the side. We want it as high as possible. Also, we're gonna put a second hole that matches the hose coming out almost exactly. So those two are gonna be as highest point possible on the bucket because we wanna have the maximum amount of water in our lower reservoir bucket. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drill our hole, and I believe this is close to a half inch bit. And I'm making it a little bit large, as large as possible, because we want our solar panel to sit in here without falling out. So you can, this particular model is you can angle it and you can do that. And so that's what it's going to look like. You won't always want this facing south to get the maximum amount of sunlight. So that's how it's going to work. It's just going to draw its energy from, it, from the sun and it will be constantly watering. Now, some people are going to ask, what about overwatering the tomato? Well, if you've ever seen an aeroponic or a hydroponic garden, the tomato's roots are in water all the time. And this only runs during the daytime at maximum uh, sunlight. So right now the sun's coming out, but earlier when I tested it, the sun was behind the clouds and it was just a trickle. So it still works, but the more sunlight you have, the better this will work. Now, the second question most people are going to ask is, is this is really an expensive setup. You've got one pump, one solar panel just for one bucket and one plant. Well, actually, there's an easy way to get around that. And you can add up to five additional buckets using this right here. And you just have to increase the size of your reservoir because these buckets will have to drain directly back into the reservoir. So just remember, this isn't just for one bucket. With a strong enough pump, you can have multiple buckets, four, five, even six buckets with the right splitter. Now, just a side note is the why I was thinking about this is we have went through the month of September with almost zero rain. I'm in zone 7A and we have had just a very light shower once in the last 30 days. So watering your plants in my zone is just an absolute necessity. You can't rely on rain because you'll go somewhere and leave for a week or two, you'll come back and your tomatoes or whatever you have growing in your buckets will be completely dead because they need water. Now you can use some of the alternate watering buckets, but the way this setup is right here, it gets watered every single day and it's going to take, be taking the water just to the plant. And I'll show you what device I'm using. This is a very inexpensive way to do it. I bought a bag of these on Amazon and I've been using these for years with my uh, drip irrigation system on my standard irrigation system but this can also be used on this and this is the key because these can be adjusted on the top you can adjust it down to a very light trickle or you can do it at full power where it's putting out a small stream continuously as long as the sun is out now as far as protecting your plant from evaporation you can use the lid on these buckets and cut a six inch diameter hole in the top and that will help cut down on the possibility of too much evaporation, the soil escape and the moisture escaping from the soil. Also, when it rains, this water will collect on the bucket and work its way to the inside hole that you've cut, probably about a six inch diameter hole. So that's an idea that you can do if you want to maximize. If you have a lot of sun, if you have many, many days of sun in a row, that sun can dry it out. And I'll show you something else you can do to protect your bucket from extreme heat. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you will protect the bucket from excessive heat and also 
heating this red bucket up is very easy. Black and reds can attract a lot of heat. So what I'm talking about is this product right here. I've used it on a lot of my other wicking buckets and this will help reflect a lot of the heat from the sun. You can also cut pieces to fit on top, still leave your tomato or whatever you have growing out of your bucket. You can cut a 50 half moon shape, 50, 50 half moon shape, and then cut the hole in the center. So you can maximize the protection and keep the heat, keep the heat off your soil. So this is really inexpensive. I'll link it. I bought it off Amazon and this will help also in keeping the bucket from overheating. So that's another product you may want to consider. If you really have a lot of different things growing in full sun, that's what you want. You want to keep the temperature of the soil at its more comfortable temperature for your tomatoes. So in order to get the tubing out and the power cord that goes back to the solar panel, we're going to need to drill two more holes and we need to look and match up a drill bit that matches this perfectly. I'll show you how that is going to work, but also this pipe that's going to come up and go back to the top and water our tomato, cucumber, whatever we have growing in our bucket. So we need to get two more drill bits and I'll show you how to, we'll do that next as far as getting the cords and stuff like that settled. And you don't have to have all the cords hanging out. You can just have just the outer edge like this, and then you can have the rest of the cord in the bottom of the bucket. But also you have to remember, you're going to have to drill holes in the bottom of the bucket. So the cord shouldn't be a problem, but I just want to let you know that's another key component to this system. Now we're going to downsize the drill bit because we don't need one quite this large. And I'm going to go with this right here, and this should allow the water hose to come through easy. I'm just going to put one on each side of our main hole. Remember we want it at its highest possible point. Okay, so we've got our three holes drilled. We're going to put our pump inside the pot, inside the bucket at the very bottom, our reservoir bucket. And I may have misstated earlier what I was talking about, about the soil. There's going to be no soil in this bucket. So that, that's something I should have maybe clarified. I'm referring to the bucket on top when I said the soil. So anyways, that is our system right here that's going to go to the top. It's going to water. Let's do the second thing. We're going to put this in there. Now this is all, of course, waterproof. This pump is completely submersible. I'm going to have to drill. Dr dr deal. I'm going to have to drill a little bit larger hole for the power cord. Okay, and we've got to fit the connector through that and it is really tight. Now there is the possibility of mosquitoes getting through this. You can put a piece of screen on here, a piece of electrical tape. I like to use this type, specific type of electrical tape. It looks like duct tape, but it's actually electrician's tape and you can put that on the inside where it will cover up and it's waterproof. It will cover up the hole. Your hole that holds your solar panel is so tight a mosquito can't get through it as well as this, this one. So that's not a problem. So we're going to hook up our power cord here and it just screws into place. There's a little bit of time there and I'm going to pull it back close to the hole. We're going to put our solar panel in. We're going to reposition our tape because it came, became loose. All right. And so we've got basically the watering system in place. And so I'm going to show you how to attach the second part. But for this part, we can just cover this up. And I hope I was clear on that last part about this only being a reservoir. No, no soil is going to go in here. That's where we're going to put very small holes. And if we need to, we can put a piece of screen, window screen over this to minimize the amount of water, excuse me, amount of dirt that gets back into this bucket. So we might actually use an old t-shirt and cut it out so it filters out any soil. You'll have colored water, but it will not have dirt in it, dirt particles that might clog up your pump. Now, since we're going to have one bucket sitting on top of the other one, there's a little lip around the rim of this bucket top. And I'm going to show you, you want to drill these holes at its lowest point so the water runs out once it comes from the top bucket and runs into these side holes so it starts refilling your, your reservoir. Okay, we're going to use a quarter inch bit to drill our holes and we're just going to space them out about every inch to make sure there's proper drainage. Okay, now another key component to this watering system is one of these right here, this micro irrigation system that can be adjusted from the top. And I'm going to demonstrate that outside, but also it fits perfectly 
into our holes. It's a very tight fit. There's not a lot of water pressure and we can force it in there and it won't pop off because we don't have a lot of pressure. So that's what's going to be watering our tomato. We can move it away. We can move it closer. We can adjust the water flow. We can use the divider to add more tomatoes or cucumbers or whatever else we have growing. So that way we can go up to six buckets if we want to with enough splitters. But you just have to remember these have to drain the top bucket has to drain back into a wet reservoir where we have our pump. So it's just going in this repeated cycle over and over. Okay, so I'm going to assemble everything in our reservoir bucket. And we can, like I said before, this always needs to be headed south, facing south. So we'll have the maximum amount of sunlight hitting this. I'm going to take this outside. I'm going to show you how it works, set everything up, and then film it working. But then when we come back in, I'm going to show you a way to divide the system and you can have multiple buckets so you're only buying one pump for multiple plants. Some people are going to ask what if the reservoir runs out of water? The way this pump is designed it will shut off if there's low water in the system. So there's an automatic shut off so you don't have to worry about that. So that's one great thing is that if you know if you forget to add more water to it or you go two months without rain and it literally burns through all the water you have in here you can just remember you don't have to worry about your pump burning up so that's one thing you'll be comforted to know that your your pump will not burn up. Now another thing I didn't demonstrate when I was inside the greenhouse is I've already drilled these with quarter inch holes. So now it can drain directly into the cap of the first reservoir bucket. We have everything set up. We have our tubing in place. You can cut this tubing shorter if you don't want to see a lot of tubes hanging around it. But remember this isn't just a one bucket system. With this pump if you size up to another pump you can go multiple multiple buckets and for the price of one pump, you can be watering five, six plants at one time. Okay guys, so even though it's really cloudy today, I'm gonna to show you that the system, this will work two, three times better on a sunny day, but I'm gonna show you even on a clouded day, it is working and we're gonna raise it up to about the point where it would be in the upper bucket, about right there. And so you can see there's just enough lift to water this on a cloudy day. Sunny day, you're gonna have much better results, but I'm going to try to hold out and see if I can see the sun coming out, but we're supposed to have rain for three hours, but it's been months. And then the day I do <laughs> the day I do this, it decides to rain. So anyways, life's funny like that. But anyways, I'm hoping this is in frame and you can see the water moving off of that. You can adjust it. You can take it completely off. And on a sunny day, you might actually have to cut it down a little bit because it's going to be spraying out in all directions. So you might, you can twist this top and you can bring down the water to just where you need it, but it is working even on a cloudy day. So for anybody thinking one pump is just too much, one pump and one solar panel is too much work and too much money for one plant, you can set up a system like this where you have a large reservoir, multiple buckets, and one pump and one solar panel, and you could probably fit five buckets on here if you drill the holes in the right locations where it drains back into the reservoir. Now the thing that makes this part work is this tiny thing here. I'm going to give you a close-up shot of that, and I'll put the link to that as well but you can have as many buckets as your reservoir can, it can sit on top of. You could go with something even larger. You could even do a kiddie pool where you have six or eight buckets. But the key here to remember is how strong is your pump and your solar panel? panel. Mine is only 3.5 watts on that one I just showed you. So you're gonna to have to size up, but then you start spreading out into more buckets and they're always being watered on a sunny day when it's really hot. Now I'm going to try to get this in focus, but this is the micro irrigation splitter. You're going to have one coming in and then you've got five going out. So you could literally turn your pump into a five unit system just by using this. And the Mr. Landscaper hose, I'll show you that as well. You want to make sure you go with the rubber type of hose. The vinyl is very hard to work with and it's a real pain. So the rubber type of hose is a lot more flexible and easy to work with. But this is the key to adding more buckets to one pump. So this is the rubber type of hosing I was talking about, and it comes in 100 foot lengths. I purchased this off Amazon, and it lasts me for quite a while unless I'm setting up a new system, but it's a great product. It's very flexible. If you've ever worked with micro irrigation before and you've done it with the really hard plastic product, it's really tough to move that around. This is more flexible, and if it gets hot outside, it becomes even easier to work with. So I'll link that product and the splitter down below. But that is what I'm talking about when I'm saying you can add multiple buckets to the system. You just may have to size up and pump size. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask about algae buildup because this is a transparent tub. It's just a frosted tub. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier about using this product right here, this aluminum wrap. It's waterproof. 
and you can easily tape it and cut it to size. And it's actually a lot wider than this, the roll. I, this is the piece I'd cut for something else, maybe the bucket, but it's not near as tall as it needs to be. So it needs to be a few more inches, but the roll is quite a bit taller. I'll link that as well. But that's how you can prevent your semi-transparent bucket from algae buildup. And you can even put it on the top. You can tape it everywhere so you can keep the water inside the reservoir a little bit cooler. And that's probably a necessity. If you live somewhere like Arizona, Florida, where you have an intense sunlight, then you're going to want to consider wrapping it with the aluminum wrap. So you're, just in case you're concerned about the roll not being big enough, this is the actual roll I ordered. You can see it's quite large and it's quite tall. So you'll actually have excess foil. So I just want to let you know that that is what I'm putting the link to is a really nice roll. And it's quite a bit larger than it looks. This is just a piece I'd cut earlier. So I just wanted to say that and make that point one more time. So guys, rather than dig the tomato up I had growing in a different bucket, I just used this bucket as food grade. And it needs to be staked. One thing I can tell you is that you can run a piece of wood or piece of bamboo or piece of PVC and then use some tomato clips to have it to grow up. So that's one great thing. I'm going to cut the uh, handle of the bucket off. I've already wrapped this to help keep the water temperature low. I'm going to wrap this one as well to keep the soil temperature low. But this is a completely enclosed system. It's self, it truly is self-watering when the sun's out. So that's the great thing about it. It's just going to go all summer long and you can reuse the pump season after season. Now the pump won't last indefinitely. It's just a really inexpensive pump, but it could last three to four years or longer. So guys, this is the completed system. We have protection of the water temperature with the wrap. We have protection of the soil temperature with the aluminum wrap. And the only thing left to do is to move it into location somewhere where it's going to get a lot of sun during the day fill the reservoir up completely and put in a piece of either bamboo, PVC, or just a tall stick, some type of stick, piece of wood, whatever, not treated with chemicals, and that will allow it to grow up. We'll clip it as it, as it grows, and we can just step out our back door. This is perfect for balcony gardening because you can hang the solar panel out over your rail, and even though you may not get a lot of sun on your balcony directly, this will be hanging out into the sunny area, and maybe your tomatoes will do well if they get enough sunlight. You have to remember sunlight on tomatoes and solar panels are both critical.